World War II, one of the deadliest and bloodliest times that are known to mankind. While the Axis powers and the Allies were battling it out, there were other little nations out there being affected by this war at the same time. It isn't just the bigger powers at play here. On December 10, 1941, Japanese forces landed on Guam, taking control of the island. The island remained under Japanese control for 31 months. On July 21, 1944, U.S. forces were able to liberate the land from the Japanese, making it a U.S. territory. After World War II, the community of Guam was put under the care of the United States Navy, along with their temporary hospitals established in a few of the villages. After some time, the civilian and military wards were moved to the Butler buildings. In 1946, we were finally given an official name for the civilian ward, named the Guam Memorial Hospital. This was to honor all the Chamorros that suffered during the war. Their support for the U.S. are found right here in this hospital. This shows the U.S. government, along with the new government of Guam's care and commitment toward the locals and community of Guam's health care. This is the new frontier, the Guam Memorial Hospital Authority. In 1950, the Guam Memorial Hospital was handed over to the newly formed government of Guam when the Organic Act, which established Guam as a U.S. territory, was passed. Construction was then completed by 1956 with reinforced concrete at Oka Point to Mooning. Many achievements and improvements followed the hospital after this, such as the Pink Ladies or the Guam Memorial Hospital Volunteer Association in 1965, Guam Memorial Hospital Authority as a public corporation in 1977, the purchase of a nearby hospital called Medical Center of Marianas to the Governor of Guam, renamed to Guam Memorial Hospital in 1978, and many various improvements from then on, including various adult and pediatric services, such as the first phase of its capital improvement program to include a new hemodialysis unit in 1991, inpatient and outpatient surgery, intensive care, skilled nursing care, and laboratory and comprehensive blood bank services in 1996, new services such as cath lab services, cardiology, and the orthopedic program also expanded to include elective hip and knee joint replacements in 2001. A MOU or agreement was also signed with St. Luke's Medical Center in 2014, allowing the referrals of patients and exchange of medical specialists. These feats show how much the Guam Memorial Hospital has improved to become a better frontier that has adapted to changes throughout the years. GMH has succeeded in saving countless lives and was one of the very first hospitals created to provide medical relief to the people of Guam. For more than half a century, the Guam Memorial Hospital has been providing heartfelt care to you and your family, serving as Guahan's first and only public hospital. We at GMH commit to journeying with you every step of the way from the moment you set foot in our hospital and into our care. The operations of GMH represent an important frontier due to the fact that it is a major change in history of Guam's government's role in the delivery of medical care to the community or to the locals. The following images show GMH in the mid and late 1900s. This picture represents the official opening of the hospital to the public. Being one of the first hospitals to be built on the island would truly be an accomplishment and a frontier in Guam history. This photo is how GMH looked back then and when compared to the hospital now, you can see the massive changes they've made by looking at the buildings alone. This photo displays a male physician examining and taking care of their patients. This photo shows a GMH nurse in her attire checking the vitals of a patient outside of the hospital. Guam's workers are working hard to make their patients feel as comfortable and safe as possible even at the oldest times. There were many strengths that were noticeable around the hospital. According to an exiting staff in a review by the Guam legislature, GMH has a very strong bond of employees which improved communications within facilities. They were satisfied with their work and got along very well with coworkers, making the job easier. Many of the staff are resourceful and met the patient's needs, even with the challenges that they faced. I think the experience here that we gain through the community or the patients that we help and the camaraderie we have as nurses, like 
we learn from each other and we learn how to we learn to accommodate um, with the limited resources that we have. They also stated that the hospital outstandingly maintained a good, clean facility. The Z-Wing that hasn't been used was taken out and demolished, allowing for GMH to diminish any asbestos contained under the floor tiles. Plans are said to rebuild the Z-Wing for other purposes as well. This indicates that they're still looking into expanding the place to hold many more facilities and take care of many more patients. They're also doing what they can to modernize the technology they have and replace all the old equipment for better efficiency. So I've been here since 1999 and it has evolved to be honest, you know, and management wise, I guess we're moving more into technology and uh, I see a big improvement from the time that I was here, I mean since 99 to now. Over the years, I think there has been improvements as far as, as the care. Um, the building, um, in general, they have made improvements in certain areas. They also made changes in the way that they um, take care of the patients. Uh, improvements in giving quality care to patients, they have increased. The mission of GMH was to provide quality patient care in a safe environment as of 2013. However, there are still some issues and flaws within the hospital that could be worked towards improvement. The Guam legislature lists a complaint as to which patients were receiving disparate treatments because of their race and origin. Many who work there find the shortage of employees and lack of morale and leadership can also be factors that need more attention. So it is very difficult to uh, hold nurses and physicians in Guam. One of the reasons is the, the pay um, and also the limited resources and the challenges we are facing on a day-to-day -day basis. And also the public is not really treating GMH or we are not getting the credit that we are supposed to get um, because the public, you know, the media has, uh, you know, or the public has doesn't really know how good work we are doing even though the facility is like this I think the quality of care is really good when it comes to GMH. The biggest thing however is finance. 25 million dollars that's how much the debt the Guam Memorial Hospital is sitting in. Among those numbers GMH spokesperson Connor Murphy says 14 million is owed to vendors for medical supplies. With two months left of this fiscal year, you know, um, we're still uh, 14, entitled to 14 million dollars more in two more months that we haven't received. Um, you know, we, we're, we're really hurting for cash and we really need it. So we have not received the funds even out, you folks have allocated from those other sources and we desperately need it. The hospital over the years went through some challenging yet empowering times. Since the times of World War II, the people of Guam have found a reliable place to go to whenever they are hurt. Guam Memorial Hospital is seen as the pillar for all the other clinics and hospitals since it is the first public hospital on Guam. They brought people together, employees and patients. As for the future, directors of GMH see more facilities, more workers, more modern technology, for the betterment of the community of